All right, let's see if I can squeeze in here. <laughs> Hi, so I wanna talk a little bit about uh, this X-Acto knife or this sort of straight razor we're gonna be using um, to cut foam. So it has a cap on it. Yours is a little different looking, but functions the same, right? This cap right here needs to be on there if you're not using it uh, for safety, right? Um, some other safety tips here. Okay, so I pull this cap off. Um, I wanna make sure that I have a new blade um, when I first start, right? But also when it starts to get dull, I wanna change this out. We give you guys some extra blades. So change those out when it starts to get dull. Uh, if you need uh, some adults to help you out, yes, do that, safety first. So these all pretty much function the same where you, t you uh, hold the top part, okay, blade facing away from your fingers, and you twist the bottom part to loosen up, and then this comes out, and you put a new one in there. So, I wanna snug it down, and hold that blade away from my fingers over here, right, blade's still over there, and tighten. You want it to be really tight, so it doesn't uh, get loose on you when you're cutting. Okay, so now that I have that in there secure, um, I wanna take a couple of like practice cuts on some um, scrap foam, maybe bigger than that, right, to make sure my blade's good. So I'm gonna cut, and that looks like it's doing fine. Um, so a couple things about this as well. When you're cutting these, Okay, you need a mat under you. I'm using cardboard right now. So aim this down. Okay, so I'm gonna set this down away from me. I'm not using it, making sure there's no one else around. Okay, so when I have this guy, let's move our project out of the way for the moment. And I'm cutting with him. Let me get my foam board piece here that I'm cutting with. Go over here. Take a little chunk. All right, so I have a piece of foam here for practice. Um, so I wanna make sure this is nice and sharp. So when I'm cutting, I cut, okay, fingers here, not under here where I can go back over them and cut my fingers, okay, you don't want that, okay. I like to not go straight back, but at a slight angle away from me, and I hold down with one hand, I hold this firm like a pencil, I press in if you're using foam, and then I drag back towards my body. Okay, if I want to make a cut going this way, okay, I don't do this, I turn my foam or my paper, and then I make my cut, holding this down, making sure not to keep my fingers in front of it ever, okay, either to the side or above it if you can. Watch that thumb, sometimes it likes to creep over. Okay, keep that thumb back out of the way. Press and pull or drag. And that's pretty good. Now, a dull knife is going to be much more dangerous than a sharp one. So get sharp blades, okay? If they start to get dull, change them out. Um, it is for your safety. If they are dull, they don't cut well, and you press harder to try to get them to cut, and they sometimes slip, and that's how people get hurt, All right? Um, another way you can cut is like this at an angle. Now I wouldn't do this until you get comfortable cutting down over a mat or a piece of cardboard. Um, but sometimes it's, you need to, you might need to uh, cut a hole out of something, right? Um, so you can go in. So if you do that, remember, keep your hands off to the side, cut away from you or down, short little kind of saw movements. And I can get, I turn that not the blade, 
taking the blade right now is in a safe spot. Turn that. But I don't want to put my fingers back here because guess what? It'll poke through the other side and get me. They're all out of the way. And so if I'm trying to cut like a little piece out of something, okay, I do that. All right, some other things you're going to notice. If I don't cut all the way through, look how this paper is still attached because this is foam wrapped in paper. So instead of pulling on it and ripping it, I set it back down and I just finish my incision a little bit better. Set this off to the side when I'm not using it. Blade away from me. If you're not going to use it for a while, put the cap back on. If you have a rubber eraser, sometimes I'll stick this in the rubber eraser just for extra safety when I'm not using it at the moment. All right. So that's blades. Now, for your project, you guys, I'm not gonna walk you through this one step by step like I sometimes do, okay? I am going to show you sort of the near finished product and I'm gonna give you instructions, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. I have this sort of rustic fence. I got this uh, pumpkin tower, as Sabrina called it. Um, now, you can make this into jack-o'-lanterns if you want to. You can make one big one if you like. Uh, or scarecrow, right? If you want to do a scarecrow, that's for you to draw, okay? So this isn't really about drawing as much as it is about cutting and building. So I have my pumpkins. I have um, my rectangles to make my fence and I I've used acrylic paint to color this okay I did the back just because I didn't want to leave it white but look how much less details on the back side than the front side so I'll, when I'm done this is gonna set in place and I even got some little grass cutouts here to place at the bottom of my uh, fence these also help for stability as well as a little splash of color. All right. So to do this, okay, I haven't completely put this together because I wanted to show you sort of what it's made up of. It's got six rectangles, so two long ones, okay, the same length. They're about the same sort of width. Uh, and they're just as deep as the foam board is. So I got those two long ones for my long boards, and then I've got four shorter ones. The reason I made four instead of just two, you could do it with just two, but it's not as stable. So what I did was I cut four, and then I glued two together. The trickiest part about that is see those holes in their middle? You've gotta cut those through both pieces. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. These are gonna be my boards that go this way, holding my sort of cross beams, all right? Now, a couple of things. I'll give you the measurements for these, but once you have them drawn, you're going to draw them out here on your, uh, well, you have a much bigger piece, right? Like this. You're going to draw out the rectangles. A lot of times that's gonna look like this, right? I'm gonna make my two long rectangles, my one, two, three, four. Of course, you're gonna be using uh, a ruler to measure these, right? And draw them nicely and a pencil. Um, once I sort of cut them out, notice I use the corner of my foam because it's already well this is where i cut but this corner right here is already has two straight edges so i don't need to worry about making these straight or this straight i just have to cut here here and then all these lines down here so i'm going to cut those out okay and then i'm also going to make my uh well let's just use the scrap piece here i'm going to draw my pumpkin sort of uh, tower. 
So what I did here is I took a pencil and I made a small pumpkin on top. Let's see how these look, yeah. I start with the one on top, it's small. Okay, it's hiding a little bit of the top of the one below it. This other pumpkin or gourd and one more that's bigger. This helps for stability, right? Almost like a snowman, like a really half melted snowman or a great ice cream scoop size. Um, and then I don't want to do any more to this until I cut it out. Right. Cutting the, the straight lines out, very easy to do. Okay. This right here, a little trickier. Okay, so when you're cutting this, you know, hold it down. Okay, hold it down. And I'm gonna go, I might, instead of, um, as I cut it, I don't want to move my knife so much towards me as I'm kind of moving this piece. So I'm going to make a cut. I turn that a little bit. Okay, I cut. Sometimes I make short little up and down almost sawing movements. But once you get good at this, you can make sort of longer cuts. I'm doing slight curves. Okay, but once I get to a certain point, I'm gonna turn my phone. Because I still wanna cut away from me. Okay, I don't wanna cut towards my fingers. I'm gonna get as close to the lines as I can. I'm also paying very close attention to what I'm doing, you guys. If, if I'm distracted, it's very easy to hurt yourself. Okay, so I got this. Now, as I pop, try to pop it out, if it doesn't come out all the way, it's because it didn't, I didn't cut all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is go back. Okay, see where it's coming out a little bit. That's good, that's good. Here's where I need to cut on the other side some more because that side's already coming out. So I just kind of go back over my same cuts if I can. Push a little harder. Now I'm not forcing this, right? I'm adding a little pressure and I'm dragging. I'm being firm, but I'm not forcing it. Part of the problem is I have a sticker on the back side of that, so watch that. Some of these have stickers. Now, this is where I'm, I might need to hold this up and kind of cut through some of that sticker and paper. Right? Coming down, away, I'm holding above the blade. My fingers aren't down there, they're up here. Okay. You might want to ask for some adults. Help with this if you're uncomfortable doing it. I am giving you all the benefit of the doubt here. Okay. I got that. Now once that's cut out, and once these are cut out, then I can start painting them uh, using markers, with this, this is basically paper over foam. It works really well with acrylic paint if you don't get it too wet. If you do get it too wet, um, they can bend, paper can warp a little bit. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So what I did with my pumpkins here is I did my orange and a couple like orange browns and I painted this. Now I'm not gonna show you how I painted this. We've done lots of paintings with uh, shading and such so you already have the skills to do this okay and the drawing skills I'm just showing you how to what we're cutting out and where we're placing them so I went over my paint with a black sharpie marker once it was dry to help get that detail okay and I even did a little sharpie on the back just because but I noticed the painting detail isn't there. I just kind of painted it orange because I'm probably gonna see this little sculpture from the back. Um, these things I painted like wood. Okay, we've done wood paintings before. This is just grays, different shades of gray, and I made them streaky. And then I went in and made marker sort of lines on them to make it look like, um, oh, not on that side, huh. Make it look like wooden, old wood. 
I used gray instead of brown because there's already brown in this and I didn't want it to be overwhelmed with brown. All right, so I got my six things cut out. Another thing I need to cut out are the holes, you guys. So for the holes, this, right? These go in to the, uh, the fence posts, okay, like that. Uh, I need to make sure that this isn't too big. It's not going to fit in there, right? If my longer parts aren't that long, notice they stick out of the sides too. That helps stability. This doesn't fit. Right, I want it to fit in, so make sure that you have enough space. I do that by taking my longest board, measuring it. Here's my pumpkin, measuring it against my pumpkins to make sure that they're they're no wider than that is. In fact, they should only be about there. Right, so you have a little extra space there to slide this into your posts and stick out the other side. Okay, so once we know that's good. I need to know where am I gonna put these holes. So if I take one of these, right, without the hole cut into it, I wanna put it right in the middle. See, there's two of them here. So there's one at the top, one at the bottom. I have space here at the bottom for this to set down on the ground and I have a little space at the top as well. Okay, these are the same size as that. And I did that. And putting this down on top of it, right? And then taking a pencil, right? And tracing around that edge. So I have a little rectangle left. Okay, and then I move this um, down. Actually, I didn't. I took the other one because these might not be the exact same size perfectly. So I took my other one and I put it where I want the other hole and I traced around that. Okay. And I cut that out. Um, and then I did the same thing for the other post, right? Except I took this and I flipped it over, measured, and then I cut it out. All right. Then I took, because remember I have four of these. These these are glued together. I didn't glue these together yet because I wanted to show you. So I have two that I had cut out, right, with the holes, but I still had two other pieces that I don't have holes in them yet. So what I did is I laid this down on top, right, of my other two pieces. And I just took my pencil and I filled, I colored it in all inside that hole once I cut it out. And it left me with a little, uh, I use red here or orange, it left me with a little orange rectangle. And I just cut just outside of that so that my holes lined up. Okay. And so when I glued them together, they lined up. Now they might not line up perfectly the first time. You might need to take your your exacto knife here, kind of go in there and sort of line them up, clean them out. But I always cut with the blade away, going away from me. I don't want to cut towards myself because if I slip, my hand is there. All right, I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, so once I have my holes all cut up, I put the two pieces together, I line them up. Now. Chances are they're only gonna line up one way. All right, if I try to line these up, look, I, they don't quite, I don't know if you can see that, they don't quite line up one way than the other way, see. That one they did line up, this one they don't. Oops. So just make sure they're in the right position before you glue them and then paint them. I painted mine before because I wasn't sure I wanted to glue them together because you don't have to. But I think 
I do want to glue mine together because it's more stable. All right. So we got this one, we got this one. I've got my beams. Now, notice I didn't, I tried to put it in there, I didn't go. It's because one of mine is a little bit wider than the other one. So they don't quite work every uh, rectangle doesn't go into every hole. Right? I have a top and a bottom. If you want, you can like with pencil, just write top, bottom, left, right, whatever you need to to help remind yourself. Okay, so now I have this fence, you guys. That's cool. It looks like a real little wooden fence, but it's just foam. If you can see, I forgot to paint one edge. <laughs> This it's gonna go here. Okay, set it down. I can glue it to my fence. This is after I've painted everything, by the way. Okay, I don't want to glue it together and then paint it, um, except for maybe these posts. I suppose you can glue those two together, but I didn't. I actually painted it all first and then glued it together. So maybe do that because look the. It didn't quite glue together solid, so I might have I might see some white paper under there. So maybe paint everything first as just sort of a rule. I also made two little tufts of grass which I cut out, painted green. And those are gonna go. I'm gonna glue those right on the front of my posts here. Boop. And my other one right here. That pineapple top. Boop. And it does two things, right? It adds a little color, a little green. And it actually is gonna keep my, uh, once I glue it down, it's gonna keep my fence a little more stable so that it can stand on its own. Cause that's what I want from this. Once this is all glued together, I want it to stand on its own. If you wanna test it before you start gluing, see if you need to make any adjustments, you can use um, some of that tack that sticky tack that uh, people use to hold pictures up. I would not recommend using tape because tape will pull the paper away from the foam. I keep breathing on the back of the pumpkins. My plosives when I speak, keep knocking them over. Okay, when I'm done, I should have something relative like that. Um, now, this, tool. Now that I'm done with it, it's put away, right? Oh. <laughs> Set down and um, put somewhere safe in a drawer. One other thing I want to show you guys with like, uh, let's see if I can keep this recording, but um, check it out. this is just cardboard and styrofoam that I've painted and glued together in different ways to make this sort of icy cavern for a, a game that we play. Right, there's a little game pieces right over there. So it took a long time to make, but it's impossible to make that without knowing how to use my exacto knife or my straight razor. It's a good tool to know how to use. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff with it. I was actually employed uh, as, a, as a sign maker, and this was one of my most used tools, is cutting, uh, cutting foam board with those X-Acto knives and making signs. So something like this might sit in front of uh, something we were selling. Oh, maybe we were selling pumpkins, right? Let me put a price tag on it or something. Very cool little artsy way to sell stuff. So uh, that's it for this one, you guys. Um, the video here is only about 24 minutes long or something. So I hope it's enough for you. I didn't, I wanted to give you more uh, uh, instructions than um, sort of show you how I'm doing it step by step because you already have those tools and I want you to focus a little bit more on using that exact one I've practiced. We gave you guys a big piece of foam core. Uh, so 
practice. You can make this bigger um, than the dimensions I'm gonna give you, right? I, those aren't special dimensions, those are just numbers I came up with that seemed like, oh, that's a decent size. Um, so, all right, have fun.